No legado. When you have secured debt, mm -hmm. um, and you have secured debt to the point that there's really not a lot of equity in the property, it's your choice. You can pay the debt and keep the property, or you can discharge the debt, get rid of the debt, but the bank is going to want their collateral. So that's true on the house, that's true on the car, that would be true on, on a number of things. I mean, I had a client come in who had several investment properties. We got rid of some, we kept others. Um, you, can, you can mix and match. Um, sometimes there are two cars, you can keep one, get rid of the other, you know, uh, keep one car loan, get rid of the other. These are all things that we can do. So in terms of the house, what, we, what we're ultimately doing is cramming down the first mortgage to 200000 getting rid of the second mortgage, and reorganizing that $6,000 in mortgage arrears um, so that the bank cannot foreclose. And as long as we make our mortgage payment, and as long as we make our plan payment, I'll jump to the very end and tell you that plan payment will be $200 a month. Um, there's nothing the bank can do about it. Instead of 2,000, knock, knock, knock it down to- No, 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 the oh, plan the payment. Plan payment. No, no, the mortgage okay. will stay, the mortgage will the stay 2,000. Okay. But the plan payment will be $200. Okay. Okay, for five years. For five years. And then at the end of five years, that's done. Okay. And no, I, I have clients that say to me, will the bank agree to this? And it's like, nobody's asking them. <laughs> okay, this, this is an act of Congress. Okay, this is an act of Congress, the bankruptcy code. It's the law of the land. It says what I can do, and I do it. Okay, this is that. That's the real joy of bankruptcy. Um, um, so it, it's so uh, it's so uh, such a law that protecting people like this. Doesn't anybody else? Everybody wants to do like that, or what? What is the well, problem? It, 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 it's it, it's not my idea of a good time. Yeah. It, you know, I don't. In, in, and, and, and by the way, when I say the joy of bankruptcy, I'm talking about it from the point of view of a bankruptcy <laughs> practitioner. I mean, when, when the, you know, when people, you know, when I talk about why I enjoy doing bankruptcy, you know, I like to say things like, you know, Citibank will not take me on. Okay. Citibank <laughs> is afraid of me, and I just love saying that. But actually, it's just there's this code that says I can do these things, and Citibank. Thank is, you, is uh, Mr. Haskell, uh, for your explanation uh, between the chapter 13 and chapter 7. But uh, my question is to you, and I hope that the audience maybe want to know to the. Uh, to the uh, context of the uh, two chapter involving bankruptcy. Uh, from your experience, if the house is no value in the house at all, I mean, the client that came to your office, what would they want to do? Are they, well, are they going for the chapter 13, keeping the house, or they just get rid of the house going chapter seven? Well, we've been doing a number of, of what's popularly called bankruptcy on the house uh, lately, uh, because yes, so many houses are underwater. Uh, so many people have, have fallen behind on their mortgages that, that yes, this is something that, that, that we do a lot of, where folks just say, you know, I, I don't want the house anymore. I can't afford it, um, or, it's, or it's a heavy burden on me, and it's not worth anything, so just get rid of it. And that is something that we would typically do in a Chapter 7. Because in the Chapter 7, you don't have that on well, my hypothetical, $200 a month plan payment, yeah. okay? Yeah. You, you, you file it, it's approved, you go on with your life, and you're done with this. You, uh, you mentioned both chapter involving bankruptcy. Does it apply to only a combined income of $100,000? Well, if the well, family who earn, uh, let's say, $150,000 a year, is there any string attached to the income? Well, with $150,000 a year, we'd run into trouble with the means test. Um, I picked $100,000 because it's slightly above the median income. For a family of four, the median income is $89,000, which means that for any family of four making less than $89,000 a year, there, there are no Chapter 7 problems. Okay, they can, they can do it. If you're above that median, you're subject to something called the means test. Now these folks, because they have the big mortgage, because they have the big car payment, uh, because they have the daycare costs, because they're going to be paying $100, actually closer to 150 with the IRS anyway, um, because even of the private school tuition, I kind of threw that in there, they don't get to put the entire tuition in there, but about 250 a month will go into the means test. Because of all those things, these people will pass the means test. So even though they're above median, even though they're making $100,000 a year, which, you know, which face it, is pretty good money, 
they're still eligible for the Chapter 7. They've just chosen not to do it. It would be very difficult for me to fashion a hypothetical where a family of four would have the Chapter 7 option if they made $150,000 a year. They would probably be forced into a Chapter 13, and the plan payment would probably be noticeably more than the $200 a month but we have to sit down and, and run the numbers. Thank you. Uh, nhưng sau mà cho nói bọn ổn thì cái chuyện là phục mai bạn đăng ký lưu khí hạ scale thì có thể được tất cả mọi người bạn hãy gặp xin lỗi thăm sau mà sẽ khai khoa khoa mình đó mình dừng hỏi mà thế nhưng quan trọng là chuyện nông tại đây nếu cứ tẹo tân tân nâng bánh hạ chạp thơ tìm thì dừng ai thư bệnh gặp xí bàn thì mua chạp thơ sư thín chạp thơ lên đập bấy nên chạp thơ sơ vật và sẽ được bọn ổn chứng tẹo lôi phía tẹo hay tẹo mình nằm lại ở bên đằng ổ bọn ổn ảnh đã ở trên phía tẹo nâng bán đời ពីបន្តែប្រាក់ខែត្រូវក្រមពីដាក់ទីពុនទៅក្រមហើយយើងមិនយើងពុំភ័យវិញសកម្មមកគេពីព្រោះចារ្យក៏មានតម្លៃអីទេមានសកម្មមកគេដែលយើងជាពាក់ហ្នឹងគេដកឲ្យពី
bankruptcy. I've been doing bankruptcy since about 1988, I think. So 23 years yeah. I've been doing bankruptcy wow. law. I've been practicing personal injury law for one year more <laughs> oh. since I came out of law school in 1987. Yeah. So, um, so that, you know, that's kind of what I do. I, in fact, I appreciate you asking the question this way because you know, I've been in now two week, twice in two weeks, which, mm -hmm. which I'm thrilled about, uh, both times to do bankruptcy shows, which I enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do appreciate the opportunity to say that I am not strictly a bankruptcy lawyer, although I believe, in fact, I am certain that nobody in the city of Lowell, no lawyer in the city of Lowell, does more consumer bankruptcies um, than I do, oh. you know, on the debtor side. Okay. Uh, certainly there are those who do more on the creditor side, but, but that's not what I do. But I am first and foremost a, a personal injury lawyer, car accidents and, and the like, uh, slip and fall, dog bites, medical malpractice, and not just cars, motorcycles, trucks, uh, fire and burn cases. Actually, my first, first ever case was a, when I was a law student working in somebody else's firm was fire and burn and, um, and the like. So that is actually my largest area of practice. It's certainly what I do the most of. And, um, and I think that that is what I am the best known in this community, in our community, uh, for doing. Uh, I can't check the numbers on this, but I, but I can say with extreme confidence that no lawyer has put more money into the pockets of Khmer Americans in the city of Lowell uh, from accident settlements uh, than me. Uh, and so that is, I, you know, what what people would know me as, and that is, as I say, the bulk of what I do. I've always done a lot of bankruptcy as well. Although it's a general practice of law, and we do you know, pretty much whatever, walks, walks through the door, and I'd say to folks, if you have a problem, just come see me, and, and if I don't do it, I'll help you find someone who does. The, my main areas of practice are the personal injury, the bankruptcy, and immigration. Uh, I, don't, it, I don't do nearly as much immigration as, excuse me, <coughs> The others, but it, but it's a fun area of practice of mine. Uh, so do, uh, you remember, you remember, by the way, when I went to visit, when I went to your wedding mm -hmm. in Cambodia, I told you that I had to go to the embassy, and that's why I was in Cambodia to to, to fix a very complicated problem yeah. that some other lawyer had made for my client. Um, the I child is here now. He came yeah. to visit me. Are you practicing <laughs> law alone? Or? Well, I, well, it, it's my firm. I have an associate, mm -hmm. uh, another lawyer who works for me, and she's strictly personal injury, strictly car accidents and whatnot, um, and on the litigation side, the in court. Uh, I, and I have, you know, a number of people who, uh, of course, who work for me. But it's, but it is the law office of Lewis S. Haskell. It's, it's, uh, it's my firm. Steve is noisy with you, then. I. By the way, my associate is great. She's been uh, with me 14 uh, years, and she is the uh, best. អរពេលអរពេលអរសំតូចចាំសំសំតូបងណាបាទចាំទឹកចុយចាំចាំសម្បត្តិទីក៏បាទបាទតោះឥឡូវសំឥឡូវក្នុងក្នុងក្នុង